This is an ECG. An ECG, electrocardiogram, measures the electrical activity of the heart. And the way that we do this is we place a number of electrodes on the chest and the arms, and these electrodes give us different views of the heart that we call leads. For example, if we take one that's called lead two, it's viewing the heart from this angle. Now, to put it simply, in the body, the electrical activity can either be positive charges or negative charges. And there's a cheat sheet when it comes to understanding ECGs. If a positive charge moves in the direction of the lead, you get a positive deflection on the ECG. If a positive electrical charge moves away from the lead, you get a negative deflection on the ECG. If a negative charge moves in the direction of the lead, you get a negative deflection on the ECG. And if a negative charge moves away from the direction of the lead, then you get a positive deflection on the ECG. Keep that in mind, that is the cheat sheet. Okay, let's see if we can make sense of an ECG trace. So what first happens is this positive electrical activity will spread away from the sinoatrial node and move through the atrial muscle that we call the atrial myocardium in this direction. So you've got this positive charge moving in the direction of lead two. And so you're going to get a positive deflection as we stated in our cheat sheet. This is the very first wave that we call the P wave. Then this electrical activity, it sort of pauses for a fraction of a second because it hits this fibrous tissue that it can't move through. And so the positive charge has to funnel its way through what we call the AV node, also known as the atrioventricular node. As it moves through, you get this isoelectric point, this pause, this fraction of a second pause. But once it moves through the AV node, it starts to move through these branches. Now these bundle branches that we have that it moves through, once it moves through them, you can see it moves in the direction of the lead, but there are all these other branches that start to shift it away from the lead because most of these positive charges are moving away from the lead. This is what we call the Q wave on an ECG. Then once it moves through these branches, it goes to the Purkinje fibers. These are the fibers that spread this positive charge through the muscles of the ventricles. This is the thickest part of the heart. And as you can see, we've got a left and right ventricle wall. And for the left, it's going in the direction of the lead, but for the right, it's going away from the lead. So what are we going to get on the ECG? Well, remember that the left ventricular wall is three times thicker than the right. So whatever's happening in the left ventricular wall will overwhelm what's happening electrically on the ECG. So what we get is the positive charge moving in the direction of the lead. So you get this big spike up on the ECG. This is what we call the R wave. Now, the last part, as you can see, is the electrical activity for both ventricular walls will move away from the lead on either side. And so we get this negative deflection. So we've had the P, Q, R, and now S wave on the ECG. The entire heart muscle has now become positive. It started as negative. It's now positive. We call this depolarization. This is important to understand because once depolarization occurs, muscular contraction occurs. Now what we need to do is the very last thing. We need to reset the heart. We need to make this muscle negative again. And so we do this by beginning to throw a negative charge through the heart, starting at where it finished, and the overall charge moves away from the lead. And so if negative things move away from the lead, referring to the cheat sheet, we get a positive deflection on the ECG. This is what we call the T wave. And what do we have? Looking at lead two, we have our P, Q, R, S, and T waves of our ECG.